Welcome to Immerse Kingdoms, reading for week 7, day 33. Now some men from Ziph came to Saul at Gibeah to tell him, David is hiding on the hill of Hakilah, which overlooks Jeshimon. So Saul took 3,000 of Israel's elite troops and went to hunt him down in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul camped along the road beside the hill of Hakilah, near Jeshimon, where David was hiding. When David learned that Saul had come after him into the wilderness, he sent out spies to verify the report of Saul's arrival. David slipped over to Saul's camp one night to look around. Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of his army, were sleeping inside a ring formed by the slumbering warriors. Who will volunteer to go in there with me? David asked Ahimelech, the Hittite, and Abishai, son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother. I'll go with you, Abishai replied. So David and Abishai went right into Saul's camp and found him asleep, with his spear stuck in the ground beside his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying asleep around him. God has surely handed your enemy over to you this time, Abishai whispered to David. Let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't need to strike twice. No, David said. Don't kill him, for who can remain innocent after attacking the Lord's anointed one? Surely the Lord will strike Saul down some day, or he will die of old age or in battle. The Lord forbid that I should kill the one he has anointed. But take his spear and that jug of water beside his head, and then let's get out of here. So David took the spear and jug of water that were near Saul's head. Then he and Abishai got away without anyone seeing them or even waking up, because the Lord had put Saul's men into a deep sleep. David climbed the hill opposite the camp until he was at a safe distance. Then he shouted down to the soldiers and to Abner, son of Ner, Wake up, Abner! Who is it? Abner demanded. Well, Abner, you're a great man, aren't you? David taunted. Where in all Israel is there anyone as mighty? So why haven't you guarded your master the king when someone came to kill him? This isn't good at all. I swear by the Lord that you and your men deserve to die because you failed to protect your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around. Where are the king's spear and the jug of water that were beside his head? Saul recognized David's voice and called out, Is that you, my son David? And David replied, Yes, my lord the king. Why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? But now let my lord the king listen to his servant. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, then let him accept my offering. But if this is simply a human scheme, then may those involved be cursed by the Lord, for they have driven me from my home so I can no longer live among the Lord's people, and they have said, Go, worship pagan gods." Must I die on foreign soil, far from the presence of the Lord? Why has the king of Israel come out to search for a single flea? Why does he hunt me down like a partridge on the mountains? Then Saul confessed, I have sinned. Come back home, my son, and I will no longer try to harm you, for you valued my life today. I have been a fool and very, very wrong. Here is your spear, O king. David replied, Let one of your young men come over and get it. The Lord gives his own reward for doing good and for being loyal, and I refuse to kill you even when the Lord placed you in my power, for you are the Lord's anointed one. Now may the Lord value my life, even as I have valued yours today. May he rescue me from all my troubles. And Saul said to David, Blessings on you, my son David. You will do many heroic deeds, and you will surely succeed. Then David went away, and Saul returned home. But David kept thinking to himself, Some day Saul is going to get me. The best thing I can do is escape to the Philistines. Then Saul will stop hunting for me in Israelite territory, and I will finally be safe. So David took his six hundred men and went over and joined Achish, son of Maok, the king of Gath. David and his men and their families settled there with Achish at Gath. 
David brought his two wives with him, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, Nabal's widow from Carmel. Word soon reached Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he stopped hunting for him. One day David said to Achish, If it is all right with you, we would rather live in one of the country towns instead of here in the royal city. So Achish gave him the town of Ziklag, which still belongs to the kings of Judah to this day, and they lived there among the Philistines for a year and four months. David and his men spent their time raiding the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, people who had lived near Shur toward the land of Egypt since ancient times. David did not leave one person alive in the villages he attacked. He took the sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, camels, and clothing before returning home to see King Achish. Where did you make your raid today? Achish would ask. And David would reply, against the south of Judah, the Jeramielites and the Kenites. No one was left alive to come to Gath and tell where he had really been. This happened again and again while he was living among the Philistines. Achish believed David and thought to himself, By now the people of Israel must hate him bitterly. Now he will have to stay here and serve me forever. About that time, the Philistines mustered their armies for another war with Israel. King Achish told David, You and your men will be expected to join me in battle. Very well, David agreed. Now you will see for yourself what we can do. Then Achish told David, I will make you my personal bodyguard for life. Meanwhile, Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him. He was buried in Ramah, his hometown. And Saul had banned from the land of Israel all mediums and those who consult the spirits of the dead. The Philistines set up their camp at Shunem, and Saul gathered all the army of Israel and camped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the vast Philistine army, he became frantic with fear. He asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by the prophets. Saul then said to his advisors, Find a woman who is a medium, so I can go and ask her what to do. His advisors replied, There is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself by wearing ordinary clothing instead of his royal robes. Then he went to the woman's home at night, accompanied by two of his men. I have to talk to a man who has died, he said. Will you call up his spirit for me? Are you trying to get me killed? the woman demanded. You know that Saul has outlawed all the mediums and all who consult the spirits of the dead. Why are you setting a trap for me? But Saul took an oath in the name of the Lord and promised, as surely as the Lord lives, nothing bad will happen to you for doing this. Finally, the woman said, Well, whose spirit do you want me to call up? Call up Samuel, Saul replied. When the woman saw Samuel, she screamed, You've deceived me! You are Saul! Don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a god coming up out of the earth, she said. What does he look like? Saul asked. He is an old man wrapped in a robe, she replied. Saul realized it was Samuel, and he fell to the ground before him. Why have you disturbed me by calling me back? Samuel asked Saul. Because I am in deep trouble, Saul replied. The Philistines are at war with me, and God has left me and won't reply by prophets or dreams, so I have called for you to tell me what to do. But Samuel replied, Why ask me, since the Lord has left you and has become your enemy? The Lord has done just as he said he would. He has torn the kingdom from you and given it to your rival, David. The Lord has done this to you today because you refuse to carry out his fierce anger against the Amalekites. What's more, the Lord will hand you and the army of Israel over to the Philistines tomorrow, and you and your sons will be here with me. The Lord will bring down the entire army of Israel in defeat. Saul fell full length on the ground, paralyzed with fright because of Samuel's words. He was also faint with hunger for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. 
When the woman saw how distraught he was, she said, Sir, I obeyed your command at the risk of my life. Now do what I say, and let me give you a little something to eat so you can regain your strength for the trip back. But Saul refused to eat anything. Then his advisors joined the woman in urging him to eat, so he finally yielded and got up from the ground and sat on the couch. The woman had been fattening a calf, so she hurried out and killed it. She took some flour, kneaded it into dough, and baked unleavened bread. She brought the meal to Saul and his advisors, and they ate it. Then they went out into the night. This concludes today's Immerse Reading Experience. Thank you for joining us.